After the North American run of the SNES, I was totally optimistic about the future of console RPGs. Because the SNES offered so many great classics in the genre, I was excited to see what the next generation of consoles would bring. I was particularly excited for the Sony PlayStation, but at the same time, there was one game that inspired me to buy a Sega Saturn as well, and that game was Dragon Force. No, not that Dragon Force, but I'm a huge fan of those guys as well. Released in 1996, Dragon Force predated many of the greatest RPGs of that generation of consoles, including Final Fantasy VII and Xenogears. When it was released, many aspects were well ahead of their time. From the battle system, to the characters and story, to the soundtrack, the game was a remarkable feat, even though it goes largely overlooked today. In the 1990s, the gameplay in most tactical RPGs played out on a grid where characters could move upon the map in turn-based fashion, and attacks had various distance requirements and other constraints. Sometimes this was done in an isometric view, but not always. The Langrisser games and Tactics Ogre worked this way, and more famously, Final Fantasy Tactics adopted a similar form. Dragon Force, however, was unique compared to many of its counterparts. It plays a bit more like Ogre Battle, but that isn't the best characterization either because combat is completely different. Much of the gameplay takes place on the world map, where troop movements are planned. Here, you can enter into towns and castles, where you can recruit and deploy forces. You can also search castles to recruit hidden generals and locate special items. Additionally, you can fortify your castles to increase your defensive stats. When your army clashes with another, you can attack, talk, or retreat. Retreat causes you to lose some troops and ground to the enemy, but can sometimes save your army from annihilation. Talk gives you the chance to reach a negotiated settlement that can result in the enemy standing down, but it's likely to fail and place the player at a disadvantage. If attack is chosen, both sides choose a commanding general, formation, and composition of forces. Battles play out in real time, but special attacks that are unique to the generals can be chosen from a menu as combat transpires. During combat, you assign orders to your troops, such as advance, retreat, disperse, and melee, with the ultimate aim of destroying the enemy unit. If the melee command is chosen, your forces charge directly at the general with no attention paid to the other troops, a risky maneuver that can also pay off at times. Sometimes you have to adjust on the fly, and the game's true challenge comes from testing to see whether the player is adaptable to surprising circumstances. Stationary units in a defensive posture, for instance, are much more effective than moving ones, but they also lack the ability to project force against the enemy. Unit types can also play a big role in your battle strategy. There are soldiers, mages, cavalry, samurai, archers, and more, and each archetype has different strengths and weaknesses. Each battle has a specific win condition, which is usually the defeat or capture of the enemy general, and both commanders have a visible life bar. Your generals gain levels and stats after battlefield victories. Outside of the battles, there's also a management mode that appears periodically that gives you the power to give awards to your forces, bring captured generals to your side, and equip them with weapons and abilities. Strategically, there's a lot to pay attention to, whether on the overworld, in the management mode, or in battle. At its highest level, Dragon Force is a bit like the board game Risk, where you put yourself at a disadvantage at times when you spread your army too thin. Unoccupied castles prevent you from accumulating necessary troops, but being too conservative allows the enemy to grow in strength also. The game forces you to make trade-offs that dictate your successes. Story-wise, Dragon Force takes place in the world of Legendra, where there are eight vying rulers. No, not those eight vying rulers. As the factions wage war against each other, they're being manipulated by Modruk, a dark lord. The story gives you the freedom to choose from one of six monarchs, and each has a different scenario which involves the same characters. This system alone was great because completionists will want to experience them all. Even still, each scenario is about 40 hours long. There are also campaigns for two additional rulers, Goldark and Reinhardt, that are unlocked only after the game has been completed. The music in Dragon Force was pretty solid. The soundtrack wasn't as memorable as those from some of my favorite RPGs, but the collection worked well together to fit the game's fantasy theme. The overworld is relaxing, and a lot of it has more of an ambient feel. The thing that stands out the most about Dragon Force is the unique visual presentation in the battles. The game boasted of its ability to display intense, warlike action in a screen filled with dozens of sprites, something that was unprecedented at the time. When Dragon Force was released, almost every RPG featured far fewer characters on the screen at one time, 
So this was a revolutionary change. The game supported the display of up to 200 soldiers at one time. These swarms of characters running around the screen was definitely an element that made the title stand out from others available at the time. There just wasn't anything like it, and it added to the title's allure. Dragon Force always seemed bigger than it actually was. Dragon Force was published by Working Designs, a company that had long been known for localization excellence. Not only did they select a game that was unknown to the West and wouldn't be released here otherwise, they displayed their typical flair and trademark humor in the localization. Through an awesome script and attention to storyline details, they really did great work. Without working designs, Dragon Force would have entered into the shadows of RPG obscurity in North America. A sequel for Dragon Force was released in 1998 as Dragon Force 2, Kami Sarishi Daichi Ni. It was sadly only released in Japan, but in 2014, a translation patch was made available for it so it can be played in an emulator. I haven't tried this one out, but I'm very glad that such attention was brought to the sequel. Overall, Dragon Force offered RPG fans exactly what they are looking for on the Sega Saturn. Its tactical approach definitely raised and kept my interest, and I don't regret seeking out the system for this game alone. There are so many complexities to this one that I didn't even explore in this video, you just have to play it. If you like strategy RPGs and never heard of this, definitely pick it up. It's one of the most superb games of its kind. A complete North American copy is now pretty darn expensive, but it really is one of the best games on the Saturn. Back in 1996, I was utterly consumed by traditional RPGs. By that time, I had completed Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, and Super Mario RPG, and was looking forward to the genre's future. At that time, the Sony PlayStation appeared to be the console set to receive most of them. That same year, however, J-Force and Sega threw a curveball on the Saturn by releasing Dragon Force, a strategy-oriented RPG that blew my mind. Its complex story, strategic-oriented gameplay, and stunning combat filled with moving sprites really stood out. Working Designs also localized the game with its trademark flair and creative dialogue, which made the experience all the more enjoyable. Despite the game's appeal, however, the first Dragon Force would mark both the beginning and the end of the franchise in North America. Even so, the development team released Dragon Force 2 in Japan only for the Saturn in 1998 and most of us stateside probably never even realized it. Thankfully for us RPG enthusiasts today, the game is fully playable via a translation patch that was first released in 2015. Verve Fanworks, a talented group of amateur localizers, sifted through thousands of words of dialogue to ensure that English speakers could finally enjoy Dragon Force 2. I've left a link to the translation patch in the description below, so make sure to check it out if you're interested. Overall, this project was really well done. The story is well written and easy to understand, and the translation made the menus easily navigable. Dragon Force 2 is set 500 years after the events of the first Dragon Force game. Like the first, you choose from one of eight total rulers of Legendra, whose kingdoms are involved in a complex struggle against each other and with an evil force that threatens the entire continent. Truly, one of the best aspects of the game, as with the first, is that each of the eight paths reveals a unique storyline sequence that affects each of the rulers. Playing through one ruler's story will not tell the full tale, giving the game massive replay value. As a new innovation, Dragon Force 2 also gives unique battle music to every ruler, providing a distinct flavor no matter who you choose. It certainly behooves players to try multiple rulers before deciding on the one they like best. In most ways, Dragon Force 2 plays extremely similar to the first. The player takes control of enemy generals that build units to direct in battle. Enemy generals don't move, but do cast spells in battle that allow them to engage in duels with the enemy general or affect the development of the battle around them. The graphical effects with some of these are unforgettable and transpire as all the fighting is taking place. The game's overarching story shares similar themes to the first as well, and the graphical quality, musical style, menu system, and visual presentation is also very comparable. However, the title diverges from the original Dragon Force in several ways as well. First, unlike the first game, each commanding general can now support two distinctly separate types of troops. This means, for instance, that you can create combat units with both soldiers and mages, diversifying your army and making it more customizable. 
You can mix and match to have cavalry and monks, archers and beasts, etc. You name it, the combinations are virtually endless. Also, the maximum spell limit per general has been increased from 3 to 5, giving a bit more variety to each of them. Second, new to Dragon Force 2 is an incredible amount of voice acting. Unfortunately, the translation patch does not translate the audio, so you'll have to make do with English text and Japanese dubs. Even so, this was a nice added touch to the game, and few Saturn titles had this much voice acting. Finally, in addition to all the troop types from Dragon Force 1, there are several additional player troop types, as well as two new enemy troop types, which expands upon the complexity of the first game and allows you to customize your army to a greater extent. Dragon Force 2 features a soundtrack by Tatsuyuki Maeda, and its classical-oriented style is immediately recognizable if you played the first game. The score is filled with tunes with horns, strings, bells, and percussion, and almost has a mesmerizing quality to it. Of all the RPGs on the Saturn, I think this one has the best soundtrack overall. It's filled with both dramatic and somber tunes that fit into the story, and is certainly good enough to listen to outside of the game. It just really complements the fantasy atmosphere. I'd say if you played the game, you'll understand what I mean. You just have to hear it. In the end, Dragon Force 2 is an amazing game, certainly one of the best RPGs on the Saturn, and is well worth playing. If you're expecting it to revolutionize the Dragon Force franchise though, you'll be left a bit disappointed. While it does add some new facets and expands the universe of the franchise, it plays extremely similar to the first, so if you love that game, you'll also love this one. It's generally more the same, but hey, that's not such a bad thing when it comes to Dragon Force. If you're a collector, you can still find a reasonably priced imported copy on eBay, but if you can't read Japanese, emulation with the translation patch is the only way to go. While the game may turn some fans of traditional RPGs off by its focus on gameplay over storyline, it has enough to offer in that regard also and it's a must-have for those that adore strategy RPGs. If you're a fan of the PlayStation and Saturn era, as well as an RPG fanatic, you can't overlook this one. It's truly a shame that virtually no North American gamers had a chance to experience it back then. The cult following the Dragon Force games attracted, in combination with the success of RPGs in the 1990s, led many to clamor for a new title in the series, a game that would push the franchise into the next generation of console gaming. Unfortunately though, they never got it, and several factors worked against the possibility of it ever happening. First, Sega pretty much stopped creating RPGs. After the Saturn, the company decided to focus their efforts on the arcade market, where they still excelled. Much of the J-Force team that worked on the game left the company and joined Idea Factory, a company that produced games almost exclusively for Sony platforms. Working Designs, the company that did such a bang-up job localizing the first Dragon Force game, went defunct in 2005. So, even if Sega sold the rights to the series to another developer, or ultimately decided to create a new Dragon Force, there was no guarantee that a North American developer would hop on board regardless. Even though a third Dragon Force title never materialized, there is a lot about the series that makes it worth replaying today. Because of the multiple perspectives and storylines, both games encourage replay more than most other RPGs, and there's always something new to discover in a second playthrough. Since it was on the Sega Saturn, a lot of RPGers missed out on it at the time, so it's the perfect title to revisit now if you dislike the way that RPGs have evolved, or devolved, since that time. When it comes down to it, the army building experience, multi-kingdom storyline, amazing soundtrack, and wild battles of dozens of moving sprites simply made the Dragon Force series unforgettable. Maybe, just maybe, the series will be reborn at some point in the future. Until then though, we have only the first two games to revisit. If you like this retrospective and remember the Dragon Force games, leave a comment below about the most memorable aspect of the series to you. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell below to be alerted upon the addition of new ones. Also, please join my Discord community linked in the description and consider supporting my channel via YouTube's join feature to receive member exclusives, such as advanced videos and complete video transcripts.
Thank you.